Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play Black Orpheus. <laughs> Black Orpheus, sometimes known as the Morning of the Carnival. It's a tune written by Louis Bonfer and uh, first became popular when it was used in 1959 in the film called Black Orpheus. And this was the, the first uh, worldwide hit in the new bossa nova style. I'm going to show you the basic melody and I'm going to show you quite a few ideas on how to solo on this. Uh, because this is a bossa nova, um, all of the quavers are going to be played straight rather than swung. So let's play the A section. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, so the main thing to watch out for there is in bar seven. So we're going from initially what was a G sharp on that note, is now it becomes a G natural. Okay, we then repeat part of that section, but I'm gonna suggest that you go up an octave. Like that. Uh, it's certainly not necessary, but it does add interest to do that. But if you want to stay low, then the surprise note, B flat. If you play it just like that, uh, as it's written, then it's not going to sound very jazzy or Latin or fun or anything, <laughs> really. So you really do have to learn to phrase this properly, and that's part of what I'm going to explain here. Uh, so I'm going to play it again, but this time with the backing. The first time I will play it more or less as I just did. The second time I'll stick very close to that melody, but I will just rephrase it a bit, and then we'll talk about how I did that.
So what was going on there? Um, whenever, whenever you get a long note, those where there's uh, really not much happening between the beginning and the end of the note, that's an opportunity to do something. Maybe just break it up into two or three notes. Uh, what, one thing I do a lot of on here is that thing. Uh, just playing the melody note, preceding it by da -da -dum, the note and the semitone below. It's a, a sort of a Latin cliche, but I think a very nice Latin cliche. Uh, so lots of room for that. Uh, whenever you get a jump, a jump of note, like from there, you can do a little bit of a swirl or a little run. There's another one from there to there. And then instead of going, go. Just a, little, a different way of getting from there to there. So just kind of de decorating the F note. And then if you're going to go from, if you're going to jump the octave, some kind of swirl um, moving from the lower note to the higher. That is actually the best place for that Latin trumpet thing. If you're going to do a big long note, which is almost two bars long, um, the very least you can do it, do to it, is alter the vibrato. So no vibrato at the beginning, put some in at the end. A note like that. A nice slide and a vibrato. For that note, I deliberately change uh, up to third position. I get both a slide and a good vibrato with a second finger, which you can't get with your fourth finger. Getting from the G to the E, sort of a slide and a bit of a scale. So loads of little variations you can put in there. Uh, and that's just on the melody rather than the solo. Okay, um, now one thing I very often do on minor jazz tunes, particularly uh, slower ones, is to do an extended minor ninth. And what does, it, what does that mean? We're in A minor, so the ninth, that's the eighth, that's the ninth. So we're going to hold a B note over the A minor chord. And it has a sort of a slightly unsettling uh, effect, but it's a very nice effect. I'll just, uh, I'll do a few of those as I go around. So you can see that's really quite a nice effect. Um, as you're proceeding through the chords, um, it's easy to just noodle and not have any sense of direction. And one way of adding direction is to, for maybe four or maybe eight bars, move either up or down. Uh, obviously not in, not just in the scale, but in the general direction. So you might do something like, that kind of pattern is quite useful. Or, and better still, if you can mix your patterns as you're going up and down again. So I'll have another go, and this time I will tend to try to uh, be all of the time moving either in one direction or the other.
and so on. You will find that uh, most of this tune is in, basically it's in A minor and you can play the A minor pentatonic uh, through most of it. So in first position that will be... In third position, if we start first finger on the C... So we've got the pattern 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 4. So that will take you all the way through the first four lines, um, first five lines in fact. But you've, all, you've got to be very much aware that when you hit bar 22, that is not going to work. So we, we're now changing to D minor and we're getting there via E minor 7 flat 5, which has a B flat in it, A7 sharp 9, so A7 flat 9 and to D minor. Uh, so the melody there... So whatever you're doing with soloing, you've got to be aware that that's coming. So that is a place where you might uh, you might just centre your uh, solo briefly around that B-flat note. And then move towards the D minor, uh, which you're going to be in for the next four bars or so. Um, alternatively, you can pay proper attention to the chords. E minor 7 flat 5. A7 flat 9. Uh, what I often do when these two chords appear together is I substitute a diminished, so in this case E diminished, up until the D minor, and uh, that's quite a nice effect. You can do the same thing on which uh, occurs a lot more often, the B minor 7, that one. That happens a lot during the rest of the tune. So coming back to that E minor 7 flat 5, A7 flat 9, a little run you could do using the diminished would be... And that's something that you would have to memorise the fingering of, uh, so that your fingers just basically know how to do that. The last two lines... What's happening over that is... Uh, And a nice line for that. Will be something like that. So let me take you from the beginning and I will... Um, I'll start off doing the D minor pentatonic. I'll go to the... Then I'll, um, I'll do the... Um, when we get to that bit and then the... That bit when it gets to D minor. Let's try third position. Let's do the A minor blues. Seven flat five. Here's the descending parts. And notice how I ended on that B, the minor 9. Okay, um, most of the solo on this is going to be quite gentle, but if you decide you want to uh, climax towards the end, a nice lick is using an open E 
Um, third position and one, two, three, four, three, two, like that. Uh, some variation on that. And hopefully, if you do decide to increase the intensity of your solo, then the rest of the band will follow rather than just nodding away and carrying on playing really gently. Um, but it is nice if even in, in a gentle tune like this, you do have some dynamics. So I'm going to play you out with a longer solo, which does try and climax a little bit. Um, if you would like a copy of the sheet music for this, uh, including all of these licks and ideas, then do subscribe to the channel, send me an email. Uh, as you will see, there are lots of other um, jazz fiddle tunes elsewhere on the Fiddle Channel, and the PDFs for all of these are available on my Patreon page. And it's the Patreon that keeps the videos coming. I'll play you out a couple of times around. Uh, thanks for watching. See you again soon.